Next up, wide receiver, Traylon Ray. Questions for Traylon? So Traylon, you came in mid-summer and, mm -hmm. and hit the ground running. How hard was, was that? Because you, you played right away. Mm -hmm. And how much better are you now than you were even last season? Um, just coming in over the summer, I was I was pretty raw. Just I played football in high school, yeah. You know, I trained a little bit, but actually getting that foundation, working with Coach Lau, being around older guys that knew what they were doing, being in college for a while, uh, it just helped me, you know, uh, grow quicker. And then being in that role playing, I just had to, you know, grow up quicker, uh, learn things quicker than a lot of other people uh, had to. But um, having this winter and then this spring ball, um, it just gave me the time to slow things down, actually work on my body, you know. Um, Getting the weight room more, I put on a, a couple pounds, so that's helped tremendously uh, on the field this spring. I want to ask because you know obviously you were a multi-sport guy in the past, so you didn't get to concentrate in the weight room. So how much did this winter and the off-season program help? Uh, it helped a lot. Um, you know, just again putting on the weight and then uh, learning how to move weight a lot faster um, helped with my speed and just my all just all-around play on the field. How's baseball helped you? I know I was talking to a baseball guy at one of your practices and he said your ability to track the ball. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you played center field, is that right? Yes. Talk about that. How has that helped you catch footballs and adjust your body? And um, Well, I, baseball was the first sport I played so because okay. that's just kind of like the sport in my family. So um, it's always kind of been natural to me, but always just starting from a young age, learning how to catch a pop fly. Um, it's just come natural to me, uh, come easy to me. So. Me catching the ball, catching a punt, catching a kickoff or something like that is feels natural, feels normal to me. So it's never really been a problem for me. Yeah. You different as a receiver this spring? You, are you different as a receiver this spring? Do you feel like you've taken that stride? Um, definitely. Um, it's just more confidence just because I'm, I'm more confident with my body on the field. I'm not really scared to take any hits. I know I can bounce off of hits. Um, coming in my, out of my breaks and stuff like that a lot quicker. And that just comes with the strength part. Come in here anticipating playing as much as you did. Um, I wanted to, but I didn't anticipate it at all. No. And then, you know, I did what I did during fall camp, and then uh, got some snaps early, and then ended up starting seven or eight games or something like that. So that was a bit of uh, of a surprise. But once I got rolling, I feel like um, I showed that I could start. Were you happy with what you were able to do? Definitely, yeah. definitely. And then I feel like that's just going. Uh, I'm just trying to keep it rolling into the next season. Was there a point um, last fall camp where you realized like you were in line to get some playing time, like coaches were <laughs> high on you? Um, yeah, definitely. After a couple of the practices, once I got comfortable around the guys, because that's just that's a big thing for me. Once I get comfortable, that's when I can really show you know my personality and stuff. So once I got comfortable and I got to play how I wanted to play. Um, I definitely thought I had a chance, you know, being number two on the field. And then once I got put in the game and then I kept getting reps, I was like, okay, I got a chance to start. What's next for you? Um, it's a question everybody wants to know, you know, I, 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 I want to know it too. You but know internally, these are my goals. Maybe you don't want to, yeah, what do you want to talk def about it, but there are, what's next? I mean, obviously there's more for um, Traylon Ray. Yeah, definitely more for me. Um, this upcoming season is going to be a really big season for me. Uh, just for what I want to do, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to have a thousand yards. Just because we've been working with Gigi, all of our receivers have, and I'm I'm really confident in what we have uh, in Gigi, how he's been working, and how all of our receivers uh, have been working. I know you stretch the field. What other parts of of a wide receiver do you need to be better? Um, Blocking, because I feel like when coaches cut on that film, you know, a lot of guys that are talented can run routes, um, but blocking is a big thing, because you, if you can block a guy, you know, 10, 20 yards down the field, let the running back pop open, that's, a lot of guys can't do that. So I feel like blocking is definitely a big thing. You came in in mid summer last year. That had to be right about the time when they picked West Virginia last in the Big 12. Mm -hmm. Did you? Both of your mind, what have I got myself into here? I mean, <laughs> um, no, I honestly, that's never it never crossed my mind because even when I was in high school, you know, my school was always it was a little Christian school, 2A, so we were always kind of picked at the bottom, too. So I came here, I knew kind of what situation I was going into from the previous season before I got here. So I came in with a chip on my shoulder, just like every other guy in here, and I saw how bad they wanted, and I was like, yeah, I definitely want to be a part of this. Is it different now? 
that now you, you guys are talking about winning the conference rather than not being a worst team but being the best. Is, is that different? Um, it, it, it is different, but at the same time, we still have the same mentality that nobody respects us. So um, we all just keep our head down, keep working, but it's a lot more as, okay, we're going to go and we're going to win, you know, win the season and win the conference. Trev, is there any comparison standing in the batter's box and getting hit by a 90-mile-an-hour fastball and getting hit by a safety coming across the middle? Not at all. There's nothing like baseball. <laughs> The high school offense you ran, I think your coach knows Neil too. Um, mm -hmm. How much or did that even help you as far as this isn't as complicated as I thought? Wow, I understand this. I've done this before. Did that accelerate things for you? Uh, definitely. So I kind of knew like just the play style at West Virginia just because my coach in high school has, you know, similar play style. So a lot of the routes and uh, formations that, we've, uh, uh, that we use here, uh, we kind of used in high school. So once I um, – Got into the playbook and everything. Everything kind of clicked for me. Came easy to me. How important was Devin to last year's room? Just as the only guy who had really been there, done that. Super important. Like honestly, he was the big bro of the room. Like he, you know, he on it. He, he was hurt, of course, but he kept everybody. You know, kept the hopes up. Um, would teach us all the little things that he knew, and it kind of just pushed our game up more throughout the season. How does it to that end then? Having Jaden Bray, Bray around, who was not there last year, but he's kind of in that Devin role as a veteran leader and also can provide experience about it. You want to go to Dallas? He's been there. Yeah, uh, Jay Bray, he, he's a little bit different than Devin. Devin's more of a, like he he's more of a social guy with us. Uh, Jay Bray, he's kind of like he's quiet, but he fits in perfect with just like our chemistry, our receiver room. So he Jay Bray knows what he's doing, and he's still kind of raw, but at the same time, he's he's super athletic. You know, goes up and gets the ball, strong hands. Like, Jay Bray's probably, like, that boy's strong. <laughs> like, like that's the grown man. We call it grown man strength. Like, call him Optimus Prime for a reason. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so us seeing Jay Bray, you know, do things that kind of wants pushes us to, you know, oh, we see him blocking, moving guys off the line. Like, we're like, okay, I want to I wanna be able to do that. So, it's definitely, it's different, but it's the same thing uh, in a way. What were they selling you when you came here? What was the draw to come to West Virginia? Honestly, they didn't really sell me much. They just they they told me what I wanted to hear. They said <clears throat> I can remember Coach Lau saying, actually, you know, we're not gonna give it to you. He wants me to come in and work, and that was honestly the perfect answer for me because I don't really want anything handed to me, and that's all he had to say uh, to me, and that got me on board. Just an opportunity. Yeah, all I want is an opportunity. What, uh, one more about Jaden. What's something that he does that where you marvel at how strong he is? I mean, where where does that show up? <laughs> So we had a scrimmage last uh, week, and he caught the ball over the middle, and somebody tried to hit him. He took it. The other kid falls straight back on his back, and he just keeps running. Like, it's, like you don't know how strong he is because he's so quiet and he doesn't talk about it, but when he's on the field, he's a completely different person. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. Because the veteran is not a vocal leader, even though he's able to lead – there's, he's doing the lead by example. Mm -hmm. Has somebody else, like Hudson, for example, or anyone else stepped up to now take over what Devin was doing last year mm -hmm. vocally? Or do you not need that as much because you guys are more yeah, at least had I feel like I feel like me and Huddy are are uh, a lot of the vocal leaders on team. Preston Fox definitely too. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But um, Grayson uh, Malisevich, um, he's definitely he, – he's honestly – He's the big bro of the room now. Just cause even though he's been hurt and uh, things of that nature in the past, you know, hasn't stopped him from, uh, you know, training like he's still top of the list um, or whatever. But Grayson just keeps us in high hopes. He keeps us pushing. Um, if he sees one of us down, he'll always come over there, you know. Uh, I worked out with Gray all winter. Like, he's – honestly, he's one of the reasons why I am where I am right now. So, There's some ways that Garrett and Nico has improved – in your mind? Ball placement, um, just extending plays. You know, last year, uh, Garrett would kind of like, you know, he'd take off and this and that. He's been working on, you know, staying in the pocket. Um, deep balls, they're, they're uh, throwing us open more. So just their all around quarterback play has just come to a next level. And I'm excited to see him. How about Nico spinning the ball? It looks like he's, he's, he's spinning it a lot better. Yeah, Nico's never had a problem with throwing a football like. Nico's ball is beautiful. You know, he's always trying to put it in the right spot for you, always giving you a chance. Um, where he's grew is just, 
you know, reading the defense, like his his uh, him reading the defense has grown so much, and you can see it on the field, and it's um, just made him all the much better. You miss you play basketball too, right? Yes. So you go football, basketball, baseball. Mm -hmm. um, football here is like a year-round thing. Yeah. So what has it been like? What have you noticed as far as what you've learned or how you progressed? Just focusing on one sport finally. Um, honestly, I've learned to pay attention to what my body feels like. So I'm in high school, I play all these sports, you know, my body will hurt, but I'll just kind of push it to the side and, you know, go to the next sport. Now my body hurts. I have all the resources I need here and I can get back way quicker than I could in high school. First time being a full time football player. Yeah. Yeah. You miss the other sports? Um, all the time. You know, I just I just love competing in them. So me, Rod, we'll go out there and just shoot some hoops sometimes just to just cause we both honestly we both miss it sometimes, but I mean, it's just the competitive nature of all the different sports. Like, you can't find it, you know. Are you a sports player or a sports watcher? Do you? I know a lot of guys that play don't really watch it. They just play. Mm -hmm. Are you a watcher, too? Are you a sports watcher? Or? Yeah, honestly, I, baseball is my favorite sport to watch. But I just love watching all sports just because I like learning. Like, when you watch, you learn something new every time you watch a different game. Gotcha. How close is your class? Um, how close is your class? It seemed like, you know, you, Jaheim, Rodney, all that you guys in that class have become very close. How close are you guys? Yeah, we're we're super close. Like, if we need anything, we know anybody in our class will pick that phone up. Like, we can call any of them. Um, we're always together. Like, when we're outside of the facility, inside of the facility, we're always together. And it's never going to be an awkward moment with any of us. I was just going to ask, in terms of Rodney in particular, mm -hmm. you guys come in, you're both kind of highly touted recruits, you're mm -hmm. looking at the same position. How is having him around been how, what's your bond kind of been like and then is there even any competitiveness between the two of you because you're looking at a thousand yards but if he stays at this receiver court and then picks up his game there's only so many yards everyone can have you got more mm -hmm. competition around but you're kind of fighting for the same spot as well yeah um so the thousand yards i mean that's what i would love to get every right. every receiver would love to get that but me knowing how talented our receiver room is might not happen which i wouldn't be mad at it like right. Rodney's a very talented person. Huddy's very talented. Preston, he'll catch anything you throw at him. So I'm not really, it's not really a big thing to me, but that's what I love to do. And uh, speaking about me and Rodney, we're always together 24-7. Me, Rodney, and Ja. I mean, Ja, we're living together next year, but um, me and Rodney live together, wake up, go to workouts together, go eat together. Like every single second of the day, me and Rodney probably together. So there's... I don't me and Rod argue all the time, but then right after that, <laughs> we're back to normal. Like, so yeah, that's that's definitely my other best friend, him, Rodney and Ja. Like, those are my, my two guys. And as a group, do you guys talk about how special you guys stick together? Uh, the yeah, group no, can all be? the time. Like, sometimes we'll be just be sitting in the room watching TV, and then we'll just be like, yo, like, we're really like doing this right now. <laughs> like, just <laughs> like, we're really, we're really here. We're playing D1 football, and we got a chance to be some pretty good players. So. <laughs> Do you have a bond beyond just even being football players? Like, do you guys have similar interests in terms yeah. of whatever? Yeah, definitely. Like, some, honestly, sometimes we try not to even talk about football. Like, we we go bowling a lot. Like, we all three of us love going bowling. Um, and we're not, we're not much into going out, so we're always in the apartment just hanging out, talking about whatever, whatever it is. Florida, two guys from Pennsylvania. Huh? Yep. <laughs> Never would saw it coming. <laughs> How was the Florida kids' first winter? <laughs> Man, I did not have the clothes. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> I was not prepared, but I'm I'm good now. <laughs> you got to play in the cold some point in your career, right? Yep. Yep. Can't all be all warm weather. Just ask the Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Yep.